This video is made in collaboration with Narutopedia. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. The Life of Gamabunta from Naruto Gamabunta, also referred to as just Bunta, is the chief toad of Mount Miyoboku. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Gamabunta. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Background At some point in time, when Gamabunta was younger, Jiraiya, in the hopes of finding the animal he was affiliated to naturally, reverse summoned himself to Mount Miyoboku, where he tossed away a snake that Gamabunta was squaring off against. Later, after the young man began training with the toads, Gamabunta was the one to tell him that the great toad sage was looking for him in order to bestow a prophecy upon him. Gamabunta was later summoned by Jiraiya alongside Manda and Katsuyu during the Second Shinobi World War. During Tobi's invasion of Konohakakure in his bid to acquire the Nine Tails, Minato summoned Gamabunta using the summoning food cart destroyer technique right on top of the fox who was preparing a tailed beast ball. Minato then asked Gamabunta to hold the Nine Tails down while he transported it outside of the village using his Flying Thunder God technique. Though Gamabunta complained that not even he could hold the fox down for very long, he was successful in doing so until Minato teleported it away. Chunin Exams When Naruto first summoned him while falling to his potential death, Gamabunta didn't believe that a little kid like Naruto could have summoned him. Naruto, angry at the comment, claimed that as Gamabunta's summoner, he was the Toad's master. This made Gamabunta lose his patience with Naruto, and he threatened to kill him. This scared Naruto into submission, but he vowed to become the Toad's master. It was not until Gamabunta saw the summoning contract scroll that he believed that Naruto had actually summoned him, although he was not overly surprised by the fact, indicating that he had known that Naruto was indeed the one who had summoned him all along, and that otherwise, the boy wouldn't have persisted to gain his respect. After Naruto passed out from riding on Gamabunta while trying to make the toad his, the toad boss took Naruto to the hospital, leaving his footprint as a signature. Konoha Crush During the attack on Konoha, Naruto summoned Gamabunta to save himself from being crushed by Gara's sand waterfall funeral. Gara was in his full Shukaku form, although Gara's personality was still dominant at the time. Gamabunta, being his usual grumpy self, refused to fight. Naruto demanded that he show him the respect he was due as his follower. This only further annoyed him, prompting him to claim that he couldn't take him seriously, remarking that Naruto was too young to share Saki with him. Then, Gamakichi, who had accidentally been summoned by Naruto earlier, told his father that Gara had tried to kill him and that Naruto had saved him. Gamabunta, impressed with Naruto, officially accepted him as a subordinate, declaring, I'll show you plenty of honor-bound duty, as he drew his tanto. At first, Gamabunta was able to hold his own, but this quickly changed when Gara forced sleep upon himself, allowing Shukaku to take over. Due to Gara not being asleep for very long, Shukaku hadn't reached full power. Despite this, Shukaku proved to be too much for Gamabunta to handle. However, Naruto and Gamabunta used a combination transformation to take the form of a giant fox. In the anime, it was the form of the Ninetales, allowing Gamabunta to get Naruto close enough to Gara to wake him up by punching him. Gamabunta was once again impressed with Naruto and even lamented that he would not be able to see the end of this battle because he had reached his limit and had to return home. Search for Tsunade During the battle between Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Orochimaru, Gamabunta was summoned, along with Katsuyu, to counter Manda. Finally having a chance to face each other as enemies, Gamabunta exchanged death threats with Manda before attacking the snake with his tanto, while Katsuyu was in the serpent's coils. Once Katsu gets out of Manda's coils, Gamabunta uses Fire Release, Toad Oil Flame Bullet along with Jiraiya to incinerate Manda before learning that the serpent shed his skin during the attack and ambushes them from underground. Gamabunta held Manda's tail while Tsunade, using Gamabunta's Tanto, impaled Manda through his mouth, effectively ending the battle. Kaima Capture Mission In the Land of the Sea, Naruto summoned Gamabunta to battle against Umibozu but failed to realize that toads are freshwater animals. Though unhappy of being in seawater as it gave him a rash, Gamabunta only accepts to aid Naruto on the grounds that he was being underestimated by his opponent. But once he and Naruto defeated the otherwise indestructible water creature via evaporating it, Gamabunta tossed the boy into the air as punishment for summoning him in seawater. However, he noted he was still happy that Naruto took so much care of his children. Pain's Assault Gamabunta made his Part 2 debut when Naruto was informed of Jiraiya's death. He told his son Gamakichi to be quiet and allow Fukusaku to tell them what happened to Jiraiya. Gamabunta, along with Gamakichi, Gamaken, Gamahiro, Fukusaku, and Naruto were later summoned to Konoha by Shima to assist in the fight against Pain. They combated the various animals summoned by the Animal Path, where Gamabunta silenced the large dog summon after he landed on top of it. 
After Naruto used his wind release Rasen Shuriken technique, he began to run low on Sage Chakra but still wanted to take out one more pain before he ran out. Seeing as the three toads were being pinned down by the many summons, Gamabunta swallowed Naruto and the animal path so Naruto could kill it without the disturbance from the other pains, while Gamabunta kept off the remaining pains. After he spat out Naruto and the animal path, the summons disappeared, but Naruto was also out of Sage Chakra. During this, the diva path saw his chance to attack and even avoided Gamabunta's attack with his Tanto, landing right in front of Naruto. As Naruto fought the diva path, Gamabunta called for Naruto to get out of the way as Gamabunta himself would attack, only for Naruto to tell him the same as he would go into sage mode again and did not want him to be caught by his Rasen Shuriken. Although Gamabunta still attacked, the diva path avoided his attack once again. After Naruto killed the Naraka path, the diva path finally recovered its gravitational manipulating abilities and pushed the attacking Naruto away. Gamabunta and the other three toads proceeded to attack Pain with their weapons, but he easily avoided them. The three toads then tried to attack Pain again, but he appeared in the middle of the three and used his Shinra Tensei to send them all flying out of Konoha's borders. As he lay sprawled in the forest, he stated that it felt like all of his bones were broken. Gamabunta was later seen seemingly unconscious on the road to Konoha by Neji with his Byakugan, who referred to Gamabunta as one of Jiraiya's toads. He told Team Guy that Pain had attacked Konoha when they approached him. He was later seen back on Mount Miyoboku. There, he had been wrapped up in bandages on his entire upper body and arms and sat together with the Great Toad Sage, who used the telescope technique to watch the outcome of the battle with Pain, and the discussion between Naruto and the real Pain. Nagato, who then uses the rest of his powers, in turn sacrificing himself to revive the people he killed during the invasion. When the Great Toad Sage said that it was over, Gamabunta asked what was going on, and the Great Toad Sage tells him that what happened was foretold though the prophecy child had been both of Jiraiya's students, and saying that maybe it was all meant to be once Jiraiya decided not to give up, and that the first book he wrote really was the key to changing the world. Fourth Shinobi World War, Climax During the battle against the Tentails, Naruto summons a toad and is surprised to see that instead of summoning Gamabunta, he summoned Gamakichi, who explained that his father is busy, so he came instead. Personality Gamabunta is a grumpy, stubborn, and highly apathetic toad. He does not like to take orders from anyone unless the summoner is highly talented and earns his respect. Jiraiya, Minato, and Naruto are three of the few people he is allowed to ride on top of his head without question. While he is quite confident of his abilities as a fighter, he is well aware of his limitations and perceptive of the power of his enemies, shown in his apprehension when confronting Shukaku head-on. He speaks in Hiroshima dialect and uses some Japanese words that only a Yakuza gangster would use, but he's portrayed as an ultimately powerful and positive force. He is fiercely protective of his kind, where in one instant only decided to fight Shukaku after hearing the opponent attacked his children, despite believing it to be suicidal only moments before. He hates to be underestimated by everyone, both of which take precedence over his normal apathy. Often it is one or a combination of these two factors that entices him to fight. Overall, despite his grumpy exterior, he shows sympathy to Naruto as if he were a son. He even explained to Jiraiya that he was aware of Naruto's talents and potential. He and Jiraiya seemed to be good friends, and as implied in the series, drinking buddies, despite Jiraiya's admitted lack of control over Gamabunta. However, he would scold him on occasion. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.